Nice kill. One more switch. No, oh, you hear him. You hear him. Okay, actually, this is way worse then. This is way worse. You heard the dash. I take it all back. It's your, it's your fault, you f noob. Why don't you stun main from market here? So getting really good at Valorant is all about these tiny things one at a time. So you should recognize in this VOD, huh, I should have stunned main. And now you know what's going to happen next to Scent game where you rotate market. It will just work. You will just stun main. It's actually that simple. I was VOD reviewing my own raise gameplay on this Regent map. Powers, deadly and... deck. I'm sure we won't break shut anything. Shut up, Nia. Shut up. Uh, I came here as raise. And what happened is uh, the door got broken and I died. And I was like, what the f***? Why did I die? I thought this angle was good. And I trust myself. So I go watch the VOD review. And then I'm like, what's going on? What, what am I missing? And I realized, oh, my omen threw these two smokes. And by the time we get to post plant, a smoke should recharge. And then if I'm omen, I always re-smoke tree. This was what was missing. And so I made a note that, hey, I'm going to ask my omen to smoke tree in these post plants when it, it recharges. You know what happened next to scent game? I, it just came in. And now I call for this smoke as raised when I play this spot. It's these tiny incremental improvements into your play that add up. Because now this smoke improves my A post plant dramatically. And I'll keep slowly adding things until I'm a radiant level raised player. Because normally I don't have to think about this because I don't play here because I don't play raise. I, I play omen. And when I'm playing omen, I'm frequently positioning more towards back here to fight for heaven. And I always resmoke tree. I don't think about it. Sometimes I won't resmoke tree if I'm playing for the one way, if my teammates die on sight. But like, I don't have to think about this when I'm omen because I don't have to call for my own utility. I just throw it. So this is one thing that I added to my playbook as a raise player because I didn't realize I had to think about that as raise. And now I do. And it works. Go literally watch yesterday's ranked games on Ascent. You'll see me call this smoke because I, I added it to my playbook. So this is the same idea. You rotate market from cat probably at least once a game on Ascent. At least. Anything that you do at least once a game, we should always be on the hunt for ways to make them stronger. And here, I found something. You heard them execute out. And if you're a Neon main, it will take you not that long to find a way to bounce a stun off this and hit main. Now, that's not it. Lower. Nope. Like, maybe we aim at that thing. Nope. Deeper. Nope. Oh, that one's pretty damn close. You see what I'm talking about? Whatever it is, wherever it ends up, you probably want it to hit like that. I don't know. Geometry. Ooh, bingo! Bingo! Now you rotate over. You come until this thing is about that big. You just stun the wall. You see how long that took me? And I can throw it fast. That's the important bit. You have to find something that works for you that's fast. Where are you going, B? I'm stunning. Walk out. Could be out. Jed dashed out. There it is! There Where it be? is! Indicator of hit! He just jumped. He bunny hop stuns it. And yes, Streets, that is sort of what you would need to justify having a, a very similar stun. You have to be like, well, look, Shiro stuns CT against a rush. I just like throwing it from over here. And I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. Unfortunately, it's a rain of flash. You I think one's Bro! No! I'm just too good sometimes, man. And you wouldn't even notice. You wouldn't even notice. Jed dashed out. Right? Because it just looks like he's stunning close market, which he is. But it's also the right depth that it will stun CT. Laska, drop the VOD. Neon Ascent. Okay. You have notes, by the way? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ascendant 2 last act. Diamond 3. Bet. I mean, it's a slow climb. Holy shit, it's been a year. Play with a death wish. Call teammate initiator utility with your stuns. Change positions very often on both halves. Always expect refrags with two seconds after you kill a guy. I want to see an around the world play after you get an offensive pick. All right, bet. Play with a death wish is a good note. Honestly, I bet you were so passive. I'm going to look at attack first because I, I demanded an around the world. And so now, a year later, I better see it. Holy f Looks like a death wish to me. Good. Good. We're just quickly going to go find the around the world chat to make sure uh, we can continue the rest of the VOD review. I'm just, I'm very strict with my notes. You, you have to complete them. So I'm going to find the around the world first to make sure we can continue the VOD. 
Beast. Beast. Sorry. Oh, you give it away? He's still not looking at you. <laughs> all right, all right, bet, 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 bet. Let's watch the now. Check. Oh, wait, did you get an offensive pick, actually? Yes. Yes, you did. Did you establish presence on site? Actually, you kind of didn't. So right now, you establish presence tree. So you could walk out cat. Oh, yeah, they recur tree. I'll give it to you. Let's watch Avad. Beside, please smoke. Gotta go. Good. Okay, bad. So, what are we stunning for right here? Let's ignore that there's a guy out and they kill us. That, that's honestly not your fault. These guys didn't say shit. What are we stunning for right now? So, first of all, there's already a Molly. But let's pretend there's no Molly. What does that accomplish? Because the only answer you have for that is it stalls. And like the question is, what are we stalling for? The A rotator? You're the A rotator. You're already here. <laughs> like you want them to come out. Okay. You, I would probably tuck stairs here. We have this turret. We had an alarm bot. And off that thing's contact, I would want to stun and peek and fight. This stun is terrible. It's really bad. It's a complete waste of the ability. It doesn't do anything. And now that guy is somehow out. Team gap. You pre-fired that stun assuming they'd be coming out. Yes, you did. And that's unacceptable. Okay? I know you pre-fired it thinking they'd be coming out. But I assure you, they'll tell you when they're coming out. Okay? Like, let's pretend that Molly's not there. Look at their comp. Something will happen before they come out. Reyna will flash. Jet will dash. Breach will flash. Breach will stun. Omen will flash. Something will happen. Some indicator that you don't even have to be looking at the smoke to see. It'll happen on your minimap or you'll hear it. When that happens, that's when you stun. No sooner. If they all shift walk out the smoke. Oh, we have a kills right turret, idiot. So stun off that. <laughs> no excuse. Literally no excuse. Cover going out. Reload. Yeah. Come trade, I go B hop. Come trade, I go B hop. Bad. 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 I fuck with it. There are literal radiants who'll do that. Hey, okay, aggro call. Okay. Freeze. So I like the play. We call it flash. We stun. We push. We fight. I think I would stay close. Your Spectre wants to fight close. Backing up might not be bad, but I like the idea of staying close. This is all right. Yeah, they end up, they did end up peeking. Now it's just a bit more awkward because you just got to imagine if you fight them here, ultimately you're going to take a fight that looks like this. Agreed? Like you're going to take some type of fight that's close range. You're not going to give them sight for free and let them plant. So like, why not take the fight that's further up? Because what happens when you take a further up fight is your teammates just have more time to react. Let's pretend you fight here, you kill one, and you die. Okay, now it will take them... Seven seconds. To get to site and plant the bomb. Another plus four, 11 seconds. Okay, if you fight here. In pink. Now, if you fight here in yellow... One for one. It'll take them... Two seconds. Plus four, six seconds. So your teammates have... Oh, sorry, I'll use yellow. So now your teammates have five more seconds with this pink option to react to the information that you've gained your team. And so they can start coming towards A faster, which is an advantage. It's good for our team to have more time in the retake. Time is money. I'm sure you've been there where your teammates had barely not enough time to defuse. And here is one of the ways that you can cost your team that time. Because you, you're, you've decided, yeah, I want to fight close. Then why this one? Why? W after all, why not? Why shouldn't I fight right here? Y you should. The only downside to this one is if the guy does a perfect silent jump up here and then aims straight down. 
while exposed to Maine here, it's not happening, man. It's not happening. Or I would leave completely. I would go, I'm not going to give him a fight. It's one or the other. You decide you are going to give him a fight. So like, why give him a fight that's closer, you know? Now, at this point, you spot Omen. You do want to fight him, but you also got info. So like, I'm kind of down. Now it's like the one time where like stalling sort of makes sense here. I'm down for you to wall up. Just because it also creates Schrodinger's Neon. I've talked about Schrodinger's Neon before. Right now, Omen on attack will flip this. He knows that you're somewhere over here. You might come Jen, but he, he's he got you pinned to this side of this line. This is Neon Land. You throw the wall up, and all of a sudden, Neon Land has become a lot larger. Because now, Neon Land is all of sight. Because Omen has no vision, and you could have totally shift walked across. Which just makes it harder for this guy. Because now, when before he might have had the confidence to just peek out, looking left, slicing the pie on his left, now he might use some utility. He might wait for a teammate that you're, that you don't even have to cross. You, you can stay on this side. It doesn't matter. You just established this um mental trick, the omen that like, hey, maybe I'm on this side now. Let's we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure he does end up fighting you, right? Still a man. Uh, Fuck this omen. Planting the seeds of doubt in your head. Careful of tree. As if you can cover tree and main at the same time. Ah, oh, they, they rewrapped cat. You mean both? <laughs> um, your crosshair needs to be right here, right now. If they come fast out mid, they actually can be here very soon. Omen deep it somewhere on mid. Above this angle. Maybe. Cover going out. Okay. Is this an equal buy round? Yes, it is. So the play here, you it's looking like a B hit. We killed a lurker. This omen is statistic this happens all the time. You go to rotate this way, yeah and they peek out Sabrosa and blast you. You know what I'm talking about? So what I've found is the coolest play on Ray's like Jingle frequently Satchel to get over this archway and get market even faster. But what I've found is he'll, he started mixing in these Satchels where he comes onto this box and waits and holds Sabrosa for a little bit. So all you need to do is go, 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 start running out, bunny hop, turn around, land on this ledge and hold Sabrosa for like two seconds because Omen's going to peek out thinking he's behind you. And if he's not there, bet. No, you just go market. Because watch, you're going to rotate... Because we, we missed an opportunity to fight this guy. Not you feel? Yeah, he's mid. Like, statistically speaking. Let's check the Valo plant. Um, It's round four. And it's 4v4. I'm so down for you to try and trick this guy and take a fight. Because that fight would be good for you. He would not expect you to still be up there. Have to do round four, please. Maybe he's not mid. But it's all about the uh, what's going on in our mind. Yeah, he's not. You heard an Omen TP. He's be mid. Boom. Boom you walled you know what i'm talking about so you wait here two seconds and now it's easy it's so much better because you wait for two seconds and now you know he's not mid any sabrosa player off that noise of you rotating will peek out so when they don't peek out you go oh mid's clear and now you, you can even consider coming this way you don't have to you're free to come market but you've got so much info it, it's so much better here like you're still worried about mid right now you think he's mid in this point in time but instead, we could have known he wasn't. Uh, let's ignore this. Like, what the f team? Calm, please. Nice go. One more switch. Oh, you hear him. You hear him. Okay, actually, this is way worse then. This is way worse. You heard the dash. I take it all back. It's your, it's your fault, you f noob. Why don't you stun main from market here? So getting really good at Valorant is all about these tiny things one at a time. So you should recognize in this VOD, huh, I should have stunned main. And now you know what's going to happen next to Scent Game where you rotate market. It will just work. You will just stun main. It's actually that simple. I was VOD reviewing my own raise gameplay on this Agent map. Powers, deadly and deck. I'm sure we won't break it. Shut up, Neon. Shut up. Uh, I came here as raise, and what happened is uh, the door got broken, and I died. And I was like, what the f? Why did I die? I thought this angle was good. And I trust myself. So I go watch the VOD review, and then I'm like, what's going on? What, what am I missing? And I realized, oh, my omen threw these two smokes. And by the time we get to post plant, a smoke should recharge. And then if I'm Omen, I always re-smoke tree. This was what was missing. And so I made a note that, hey, I'm going to ask my Omen to smoke tree in these post plants when it, it recharges. You know what happened? Next to scent game, 
I, it just came in. And now I call for this smoke as raised when I play this spot. It's these tiny incremental improvements into your play that add up because now this smoke improved my A post plan dramatically. And I'll keep slowly adding things until I'm a radiant level raised player. Because normally I don't have to think about this because I don't play here because I don't play raise. I, I play omen. And when I'm playing Omen, I'm frequently positioning more towards back here to fight for heaven, and I always resmoke tree. I don't think about it. Sometimes I won't resmoke tree if I'm playing for the one way, if my teammates die on sight, but like I don't have to think about this when I'm Omen because I don't have to call for my own utility. I just throw it. So this is one thing that I added to my playbook as a raised player because I didn't realize I had to think about that as raised. And now I do, and it works. Go literally watch yesterday's ranked games on Ascent. You'll see me call this smoke because I, I added it to my playbook. So this is the same idea. You rotate market from cat probably at least once a game on Ascent. At least. Anything that you do at least once a game, we should always be on the hunt for ways to make them stronger. And here, I have found something. You heard them execute out. And if you're a Neon main, it will take you not that long to find a way to bounce a stun off this and hit main. Now that's not it. Lower. Nope. Like, maybe we aim at that thing. Nope. Deeper. Nope. Oh, that one's pretty damn close. You see what I'm talking about? Whatever it is, wherever it ends up, you probably want it to hit like that. I don't know. Geometry. Ooh, bingo! Bingo! Now you rotate over. You come until this thing is about that big. You just stun the wall. You see how long that took me? And I can throw it fast. That's the important bit. You have to find something that works for you that's fast. So I came over here. I'm listening. Are they coming out? And notice, even if this is smoked, I can tell I'm in the right spot because of the distance between these. I hear him come out. I throw my stun. Bam. And now I can fight this guy. And guess what won't come? The trade. These guys behind the jet just ate a fucking stun. The only people who didn't get stunned are maybe the ones routing logs. And these guys are not a threat to us because we're fighting jet from back here we are chilling now so bam i just added something to your playbook keep this in mind this is going to happen all the time you play b retake from ct look for these improvements because this is the type of stuff that makes you a main Watch out. this is what makes you a neon main yeah. is knowing oh yeah when i rotate over to market i like to throw this stun real quick before i fight Look how perfect that is. I can throw this every time now. I found it and I'm good. The problem with Neon here is we're not going to find many pro Neon Ascent pods. Shiro. Da, 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 but this guy plays him. Let's see if we can find this guy. Coming um, market. Oh, look, like, look. We started going even at one point. We oh, man. It's, it's a bit different. Playing. But it's the same idea. The dude's the bros that lurked mid. We were scrapping, bro. Like that. You see how he immediately had a stun for that? Because this is a scenario that happens a lot. You rotate from cat through mid and there's a lurker. And so he's got a stun. Easy. There. That hits this guy. We gonna be? I'm stunning. Walk out. Could be out. Jet dashed out. There it is! There it is! Indicator of hit! He just jumped. He bunny hop stuns it. And yes, Streets, that is sort of what you would need to justify having a, a very similar stun. You have to be like, well, look, Shiro stuns CT against a rush. I just like throwing it from over here. And I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. Unfortunately, it's a rain of flash. You're going Bro! No! I'm just too good sometimes, man. And you wouldn't even notice. You wouldn't even notice. Right? Because it just looks like he's stunning close market, which he is. But it's also the right depth that it will stun CT. Eh? Okay, less bet. That's a lot of nade damage. This guy, you have heal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Take Vandal Roman. I don't know what to do. Sky, hum CT. On A, on A, on A, on A. Bro, oh, get your heal! Nice shot. There's two on B. Oh, look, way back here. You see how at this point you can comfortably just bunny hop over to CT? 
you can call your sky back you guys can meet up form a friendship circle 40 they're pushing catwalk they're pushing shot uh three already yeah so you know why you don't hit this breach i mean you probably know anyone in chat can tell you yeah right you're looking at your mini map yeah so you've recognized the coming tree. You've recognized your fucker's dead. But what you didn't recognize is this round is like your position of a main is paramount. You need to control a main or you will lose this round. And so you can't look at your minimap basically for the rest of the round until um, you feel comfortable. Can't look at it at all. This this is so hard for lower rated players. It's so hard, but you have to stare at your crosshair now. You need to control a main. And yeah, walking forward is the right call uh, because they're going to push up tree and they're going to clear you from behind. But it is likely they have at least one coming this way to take a main control. And you have to win that fight. Watch out. I'm out. I don't like this. Th th this happened a few times now where we just hucked util, YOLO, a main off no info. I really don't like it. Um, we weren't seeing Shiro do this in his VOD either. Um, I don't mind calling the omen one way for you to get a bit wide and play off of it. But I don't want you using util here with no info. Um, now, if you hear like an omen TP, then I'm super down for you to stun right side and fight or some shit. But you're just throwing the stun with no like, no signal, you know? They're going catwalk. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Why do you throw the second stun? Very nice. Very nice. So you stun, and this just feels like time to go. You feel? Go do just your playlist of VT plays for extra practice. I genuinely think you should just do my playlist daily. If you just care about reaching the top ranks of Valorant, my 30 minute playlist is more than enough. If you care about reaching the top ranks of Kovacs, then yeah, you should aim train more, but it's worthless. So let's say you have 90 minutes of practice time per day in you. Spending 30 of that on aim and 60 on reviewing your VOD to find things like that stun I just found and that off angle that's going to get you to radiant like 10 times faster than just spending all of this on aim and skipping the vod review part okay now if you somehow are no life valorant's the only thing you care about you have no job you're rich then yeah fuck it, dude aim train once in the morning once before bed 90 minutes each and vod review and play five ranked games i'm not going to stop you but if you're not even vod reviewing and you're considering aim training more like what are you stupid you, you know that you should be vod reviewing yeah i also don't know what the review is yet have you considered that i made how to vod review the, 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 the guide the movie the four minute long youtube video that tells you hey these are some categories that you can easily identify in your own play without a coach and you can watch your own VODs and easily identify these issues and fix them yourself. Bad, bad, that's crazy. I feel like we played so many eco rounds. So we win this round. Yeah, why don't we buy Sky here? Oh, we do. Okay, bet. We're bought. Bro. <laughs> Our Killjoy setup is one turret. <laughs> bro like you you have okay you're losing rounds to um a lack of pre-round positioning like you're not thinking enough if, if you're calling the shiro vod he would occasionally come play market this is one such round where you have to be over there man um our killjoy's got no setup they have killjoy ultimate killjoy ultimate is frequently used to take b site we're missing too much in this pre-round kind of autopiloted to your normal catwalk and shocker no. they hit b, b you know it's b man b b b b no meat and then they don't have to use all so they still have it they don't have to use it again yeah now we're paying the price oh your b may not like this <laughs> okay okay so big crosshair i fuck with it but when you have a big crosshair this is my largest one i've shrunk it a little bit but sometimes i use a really big crosshair when you get into these things, bam. I recall scrubbing through attack and I liked what I saw. Nothing you can do there. He kills you too fast. 
Yeah, so I really don't like this. Yeah, we're, we're, our pre-rounds are a bit weak. Do you see what's wrong with peaking tiles this round? Let's ignore the crosshair placement. It should be way better. But you see what's wrong with this? So it's their bonus round, which means they're going to have specters, stingers. But you know what else they have? They have an omen who definitely plays tree, who has what gun? We got a guardian. And we know that because we died to it literally last round. So of all the fights we want to offer the enemy team on their weak buy round, like their, their bonus, this is probably the most fair fight we could offer them, which is a terrible idea. A terrible idea. I would wait for this smoke to bloom. And look, we're even smoking it. Did, did we pre-round this? If we pre-round this, then I'm really mad. I hate duelists who peek before my smoke blooms on ascent. Let's play okay, guys, we're level winning, level. man. Oh. We're making comeback, bro, like the Austrian painter, you know? Yeah. True. Can you ease, yeah. ease the smoke here, please? Now, I, now I'm mad. You call the smoke and you peek before it blooms? And maybe uh, maybe Omen, you come uh, meet with me. The rest of you go be, man. You're the reason that I had to VOD review myself and incorporate the wait for my smoke to bloom before you peak calm in my pre-rounds. I had to learn that as an Omen player on this map because of annoying duelists like you who would peak the operator bot mid half a second before my smoke blooms. And I'd be like, Fuck, why did he do that? He's so bad. And I, I had to learn like, you know, why didn't I tell them? I'm kind of bad too. But like, this ain't Omen's VOD. This is your VOD. If this was Omen's VOD, I'd tell him, okay, you got to tell your stupid duelist player not to peek because all duelists are dumb. But you're the duelist right now. You can't rely on this guy to be smart. What the? But just don't die. All right, bad. Could be close. Okay, I don't like it. So you recognize they can be close. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I've got a rule for like utility and when you should use it sparingly and when you should use it liberally. When you have um, a stronger economic gun buy than the enemy team, utility should be used liberally. Liberally. You should use it without a care in the world. When you have a gun disadvantage, utility should be saved for crucial moments. You need to be greedy with your utility conservative and the the logic is worst case your util gets you some space and you didn't get any kills that's okay because you have a gun advantage so that space will be useful and you can capitalize on it with your guns when you have a weaker buy you can't just use util yolo because if they're not there now you're gonna have to take a fight against them without any util which is like kind of lame so you can be, you can throw util way more willy nilly on your uh, economic advantage rounds. So advantage, burn that util, man. Clear all the annoying shit. Like I'm down for sky to dog B main to clear this close right angle and clear lane and clear logs. Like why use their guns? You're using your gun here, but we could stun it first. Because they're at eco round, they could be doing some weird ass shit, man. And I don't want to give them any of that. Close. Yeah. Look at this. We, this is so dangerous. Stunning this. Mark. See? Your omen got blinded. Just like you. You both got flashed. You know the only difference? Look, this is what your omen's minimap looks like right now. And you're expecting him to follow you. Minimap refrag? Okay, I come. Reach on search. Okay. This is in your notes, so I fuck with it. But we're going to change this now. If you got one there's still four alive then heating like this is lit okay it's, it's it's valid you got two heating like this is not valid it's not um it's checkmate taking sight getting that bomb down and setting up a good post plant is gonna be way better back with this it's in your notes one enemy remaining That's nice. nice good job tech looks good one uh, cat Bad. Bad. This guy's an attack chef, man. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, okay, chill. Are you, are you really gonna do it again? Play no, okay, good. good. I play, I play main, bro. I play main. Three, yeah, three, but now, now you're like all, you're all lost, right? Because you were like, oh, I'm gonna around the world again, and you're like, ah, oh, actually, that's kind of dumb. But now, like, look at your positioning. At this point, you honestly, commit to it. Uh, and then I would in VOD review, I'd be like, you're kind of trolling. But it's even worse to like half commit and then half commit back. I play, I play now this is so bro, awkward. Like, where man. you're in no man's land. Three, three. Oh, fuck. Okay. I play, I play main, bro. I play main. You got owned by like a crosshair placement rule. So you're like doing this, right? To unswing the angle. You're doing this pre aim, move, pre aim, move. But when you're unswinging an angle, uh, it, the rule of thumb is you only pre aim when you're aiming to a wall. Okay? When you're unswinging an angle like this, you like trace it like that. The reason why is tracing's bad when you're peeking because you're peeking in a curve. And so your trajectory as you expose to them is suboptimal. When you're unswinging, that's not a problem because um, you're not peeking them. It's fine. You don't need to unswing them on the optimal perpendicular trajectory. So it's better to track here in case they're close there. and they swing out because you want your crosshair to be ready for that. So these little pre-aims when you're coming out are good but when you're unswinging it's like this there. what does perpendicular even mean 90 degree angle these two lines are perpendicular to one another so if an enemy peeks you looking this way you want to be walking on this line which is perpendicular to their sight line because that maximizes the amount of distance your head is moving per second on their screen because essentially only the horizontal component of your movement vector affects your head because uh, any, if somebody's walking straight at me right now, my crosshair's on their head, then their head doesn't move. Agreed? So let's say that this is me. I'm looking that way, right? Here I am looking that way. If they're here and they're walking this way, then that is two vectors, some vector X, some vector Y, and only the delta X portion of this vector affects the speed at which their head is moving on my screen. You feel... And so if you're moving diagonally at some speed Z, which is always constant in this game, your movement speed, we'll just call it pecking two. Then like, let's say you're walking diagonally, then you, your head's only moving at like root two, which is 1.4, which is significantly slower than two. A lot easier of a shot to hit. Pythagoras would not be proud. Three round to do call a read on an enemy player who feels predictable. Look at their ultimates, think about what guns they have, where they've played in the past. I want reads to be present in your calls starting on round three of each half. All right, this is your, this is your uh, veggies. We missed way too much. Like the enemy team was hitting B every round. They had Killjoy ultimate. You're still playing A. The Omen at Guardian on bonus. You just swung him catwalk before the smoke. You got to fix that shit. You got to fix that shit. Then we got to talk uh, gunfights where they actually can see you. Mini map. Light switch is not fully held in. I notice times where you're clearly glancing at your minimap when you have no right to do so. When in crosshair mode, try to ignore everything else in the world except the one threat you are controlling. Handle that threat and don't sweat the rest. Like if you die to your back while you're in minimap or while you're in crosshair mode, you just go, well, I am, maybe I should position differently or whatever. Okay. But I can't have you dying to that breach. A main, you, you know what I'm talking about this. Fear. I cannot have you dying to this guy in a way that looks like this. Okay. Unacceptable. Not allowed. This is crosshair mode. You are controlling this. I, I'm down for you to die to him, but not the way that you died to him. I need you to die to him because he one tapped you because he stunned you. I need you to die to him because he jump spotted you and Killjoy Ferrari peeks you and then Breach peeked from up here. You have to die because they outplayed you, not because you outplayed yourself. This doesn't mean always winning fights, but it means winning your fights when the enemy takes it poorly, which they will a lot. It'll become closer and closer to 50-50 as you get closer and closer to Radiant, basically, because people will stop making goofy ass mistakes like this. Hey, 
Wuhujin here. Did you know that I stream every weekday doing VOD reviews and playing ranked? If you enjoy the videos, the best way to support me is to show up live. If this video was just uploaded, it's very likely that I'm streaming right now. All of my coaching is free, but that means I need to make money in other ways. Please consider supporting me with a Discord subscription if you can afford to do so. I run many live events for my tier 3 subscribers as a thank you for letting me pursue my passion every day. At 2,000 subscribers, I'll be booking a flight out to EU and to APAC to play in-houses on your servers. Thank you for supporting me.